Lesson sixty nine. Du hast. So, Lisa, our listeners and readers here are complete beginners when it comes to German. So, we're introducing only one form at a time of this new verb, the verb to have. So, three lessons ago, we gave them the first person singular form, and now we're going to give them each one kind of piecemeal, just so they can ease into it. Which I think is really nice, especially for this verb, the same as with sein to be. Haben has a lot of changes in its forms. So here, for example, you have to watch out that it drops the b. You have no b for the second person singular du. It's just du hast. I'm really starting to see. A similarity here between German and English, because I think that in English we have some archaic forms similar to German for this particular verb, especially "hast." I think in some older English texts you might see the word "hast." For example, the King James Bible. If you see the archaic pronoun "thou," it might be followed by "hast." Thou hast in the Bible. You might read something like "Thou hast delivered me." So this word "hast" or "hast" it just it rings in my ear as very similar to archaic English. Yes, and it has very similar functions too as in English. For now, we use it for in just a statement in the present tense. But if you should continue to study German, you will see, just like in English, we can use this to form, for example, the past tense. For example, if I say. Right now, I am going to the store. Then later on, I could refer to the past and say, "I have gone to the store." So I can use the word "have" to indicate action that happened in the past. So you're saying that we can do that in German as well, right? That's right. So for going or walking or everything that has to do with movement, when we form the past tense, we use the auxiliary verb to be. So it's like "Ich bin gegangen." But everything else, all the other verbs that don't have movement, basically like answering or asking or whatever, they form it with to have. So for some verbs, it's like I am plus a past participle. Right. So I mean, your example is not wrong in this context. It's just it wouldn't be the verb to have in German. So that's correct for English, but it wouldn't be that same way in German. But the concept is the same: that in German you can use the word "habe" to show the past tense. Right. So, for example, I am reading a book right now, and then next week I can say, "I have read the book." So, you, in German, you could say "Ich habe gelesen." Right. You would have the verb to read in the participle form, and you would have. The word to have to help you make this tense. I hope this wasn't too confusing. No. <laughs> no, no. I think what's interesting to me is that when we look at this verb, it brings to light more of the similarities between English and German, which for me is interesting. I love comparing languages. I guess you could call that comparative linguistics or something. But right. 